Okay, this is part two of a two-dimensional uh, kinematics or two-dimensional projectile motion problem. Uh, in the first part, well, what we're being asked to find is the total time of flight of this ball that we're throwing off the top of a building. In the first part, we decided to break the problem into two sections, and the first section of the motion ends here at the ball's apex, <coughs> where its y velocity is zero. And we solved for the time it took the ball to reach that point. And so now I know that, I'm going to move over one slide to my known equations. And I've written that here. So t sub a means t to the apex. This is the result I got in the last video of what the time was to that point. v naught sine theta over g. And just as a sanity check here, I'm going to check my units. I should have seconds here, obviously. On the right side, I've got meters per second from the v naught. Sine theta has no units. You cannot have a trigonometric function with units. Uh, and meters per second squared uh, for, the, for the acceleration. Meters are going to go away. One of these seconds is going to go away. And the next one, because this is the denominator of a denominator, flips up to the numerator. And we've got seconds. So I feel good about that answer. <clears throat> At least my units are right. So now let's talk about our strategy. Um, there are two different ways we can proceed. What I'm going to do in this video is try to find the time it takes the ball to go from here uh, from here to here. In other words, from the apex down to the ground. There's another way to solve it, which I'll do in another video. But for this one, I'm going to try to, to just force my way through in that method. Now, what prohibits me from doing that is I don't know this distance. right? If I know that distance, I've got lots of fun kinematic equations to tell me what's going on there. But, I do know something about that distance, right? I know that this part of it is d1. That's from here to here. So, I'm going to call this distance d2. And my total distance, then, will just be d1 plus d2. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to try to find out d2. In other words, I'm going to try to find out how far above the building that ball rose in the air before it started to fall back down. So, <clears throat> Let's go over. And again, notice I'm still looking at the motion in this first part. This part right here is still where I'm concentrating on. But that's good because I've actually solved that for a time and I'm pretty familiar with it. So let me go. Here are my knowns. Uh, and I'm going to try to figure out what d2 is. So I'm going to use the kinematic equation that looks like this. Delta y is equal to v0 yt plus 1, oh, sorry, 1 half a t squared. Okay? Uh, a is still just minus g. I'm still in free fall. Right? v naught y is just v naught sine theta. All I'm doing is I'm looking over here at my knowns and I'm writing it, I'm substituting in things that I already know, that I've already solved for. Um, so that's what I've done here. t, well, I've solved for that already too. That was This is my t to the apex. So this is just v naught sine theta over g. That's going to be this t as well, right? This is going to be squared. I'm not going to write it in because it's, it's already looking too crowded. But that's what I'm going to substitute in for t because that's the point at which I'm looking at the motion. And my delta y is just what I'm calling d1, right? It's how far above the building. So if I rewrite all this, I get d1 is equal to. Now I've got a v naught sine theta here and then a v naught sine theta here. I'm multiplying those together. v naught y times t. So this is going to be a v naught squared sine squared theta over g. All right? And then I'm going to add to it the second term, but I've got a minus g for my a from right here. So this is going to be minus one half uh, g times my time squared. My time is this term right here. I have to square the whole thing. Get rid of that box. It's going to be v naught squared sine squared theta over g squared. Now things are looking good. Number one, this g is going to cancel with one of these g's. And look, I've got the exact, almost the exact same expression. I've got v naught squared sine squared theta over g minus one half of v naught squared sine squared theta over g. So my units are all right. Uh, I like where this is going. Uh, that calculation is just this something minus half of that same something. 
And hopefully we can all see our way through to saying that that is just half of that something, right? Uh, 2 minus half of 2 is just half of 2. 1 minus half of 1 is just half of 1. So this something minus half of that same something is just half of that something. So let me, let me, um, let me go to another slide. So what I get out of that is that D1 is equal to 1 half V naught squared sine squared theta over G. Okay? Yay! I know D1. So that means I can go back to my known column and I can write this. D1 is equal to V naught squared sorry, wait, that's okay. Sine squared theta over 2G. The 2 because there's a 1 half in front of that, right? So great! This means that I can solve for the time. Let me go back here. I've solved for the time, sorry, not the time, I've solved for the distance here, what I'm calling D2. And now, I can go and find a fresh slide. I'll just do it here. Let me erase all this. <clears throat> I can form another kinematic equation. Delta Y is equal to V naught Y T plus one half A T squared. So this time, my delta Y is now the whole length. Let me go back. It's this whole length here. This is my new delta Y that I'm solving for. So if I go back to my calculation slide, this is just D1 plus D2. And I've got expression for D2. I've got a number for D1. I'm good. Is equal to, well, V naught Y is, well, V naught Y in this case now, notice where I'm checking, notice where I'm starting my motion. I'm starting my motion right here, right? So my V naught Y uh, is zero. This is what I used for V final in the first step. But now it's my V initial because I'm starting to look at the system at that point. So this is just zero. That's nice. And again, this is just minus G, right? And so what I get out of this is that is that D1 plus D2 is equal to minus uh, 1 half G T squared. I can solve this for T, and I get... <clears throat> I'm going to put this in parentheses. Uh, and that will show, I'll show you why in just a second. What I'm going to get out of that is that uh, T is equal to 2 times D1 plus D2 over G, and that's a minus 2 square root. Okay? I've put this, I've put the D1 plus D2 in parentheses because notice that D1 plus D2 is probably going to be a positive quantity, but I've got to be careful with that because my delta Y in this case is negative. Let me go back to my first slide. I'm moving from this point to this point. So I'm going to have to assign the negative sign to it based on the fact that I know it's moving down. What's my clue that I'm going to have to do that? Well, I get a, I have a negative sign here under the radical. And so if, if that quantity is negative, if my whole quantity here is negative, then I'm going to get an imaginary time, which doesn't make any sense. So I just have to remember that my delta Y is negative. It's got a value of D1 plus D2 but that entire quantity will be negative because I'm moving down. So the fact that I get a negative here is a sign that's like, oh, I bet I'm going to have to do some, some more examination of this problem. And in point of fact, I do. <clears throat> so I've played a little fast and loose with the symbols here, just plugging in D1 plus D2 for delta Y. But you've got to remember, it's actually minus. If you want to be really explicit with it, you could put in a minus here, which I probably should have done. I don't have any room to write it in, so it's a little one. But... Uh, and that would, in case, that would make this a positive, right? Hopefully that all makes sense. Right. So this is still not my final answer. Please notice, this is the time it takes to move from here to here, right? My final answer is that time plus the time I found originally, which looks like this. So T total is equal to, what was that? Um, square root of 2 d1 plus d2 over g 
plus, uh, I think it was V naught sine theta over G. All right, hopefully this makes some sense. Uh, of course, if I were actually solving this problem on a test, I would need to substitute in the value that I found for D2, which was a long expression I'm not going to do here. Uh, but in general, you should plug in everything that's possible to you. All right, hope this makes some sense.